Hi guys, my name's Tom and welcome to the channel. I wanted to do another video following on from my last one, which I was talking about creating marking spots and stripes on wildlife, which can also be applied to birds, of course, and also people with tattoos, that sort of thing. So we covered a few core principles there that should help you with this topic. So I just wanted to release another video where we take those principles and apply it to a different subject. Let's have a look. So the main focus of the last tutorial was considering how our markings, spots or stripes, transition from light into shadow, basically in terms of tone, colour and also edges. So the general thing is I, I tend to go a little bit warmer or cooler in the shadows depending on what the light is doing. Then I tend to make the markings obviously lighter in the light area, darker in the dark area and I tend to create softer, more out of focus shadows by working a little bit more wet into wet. So this first stage is all about laying in what I call a light family, laying down the colors that will eventually represent the lighter areas of the animal, laying down the underlying colors first to create the form, creating a little bit of variegation and variety of color and tone within this light area, but not going too dark because I know that the shadows on top are gonna to make sense of it. I'm now painting the markings within the light area. So I'm making these quite warm. I'm using uh, more of like a purple color uh, with a decent amount of water so that they are lighter and warmer. Notice I'm really taking care to make the shapes accurate. Um, they've got a nice kind of freedom to them with the way that they've been painting with the brush, but they're very accurate. I'm taking my time with each one. Some of them are being painted a little bit more wet into wet into the underlying area, which is giving them a slight softness, no problem with that. Now I'm beginning to block in the large shapes of shadow that represent the kind of shadow on the orange fur. This is where people get a little bit lost because we're starting to sometimes paint the shadow of the animal itself, other times we're painting the markings in shadow. But just keep it dead simple, we've knocked in the markings on the light side, I'm now knocking in or blocking in, more technical term, the, the large underlying shadows of the shadow side of the animal. So if we ignore the markings for a moment, we've got the light side of the animal painted, I'm now painting the shadow side of the animal, the gentle or lighter shadow first, the medium shadow, then I slowly increase the depth of tone moving towards the deeper or the darker shadows. In some places this is dark mid-tone, in other places it's a very deep, rich dark. Whilst this gentle shadow is still wet, I start to, or damp I should say, I start to drop in a thicker paint consistency. So we've come up to like maybe double cream, possibly even almost neat paint. Now I'm dropping this into an area while it's still a bit damp. It didn't quite kind of blend in as much as I wanted, so I just gently wash through a bit of clear water and you can see that darkens and ever so slightly softens that area of dark, dark stripes. We don't need to overstate the stripes, we can hint at them using simple, quick, immediate brush strokes, all the time thinking about the rhythm and the movement and the size and the shape of the brush strokes as they move around the form. But now immediately I start to home in on the smaller shapes around the eye. So a smaller brush, more accuracy to the shapes and you can see how quickly that brings the facial features to life. I take exactly the same approach with the follicles of the the whiskers as well, they tend to be darker in the shadows. I purposely make them lighter and warmer. Now I'm glazing in ultramarine for the white fur in shadow. And this is a really little, uh, interesting little area, play of light. The, the eye I'm painting at the moment is in shadow. Now a great little trick is when you glaze shadow over some existing markings, I then darken the markings in the shadow area. This is a great little trick to accentuate the feeling of light. It accentuates the transition from light to shadow, not only in the white fur, but also with the markings themselves. I take that exact same principle into any markings that are partly in light, partly in shadow. That little counter change of tone creates this illusion of form and depth and light. The rest is just trapping the light on the tiger itself with some of that background, 
pushing it nice and dark as I go, creating a little bit of variegation of color and tone. And basically we've kind of got it. So I established a big light area first, putting in some markings on top, but keeping them light and warm. I then establish a very large underlying shadow area. And whilst that's still damp, I wash in some very, very simple, much darker stripes and markings getting some softer edges because I'm working wet into wet. And then my very final little trick, as I said, is just looking for any markings that bridge the gap between light and shadow, keeping them light in the light area, but darkening them in the shadow area to exaggerate that form. And then my very final point is just regarding color and temperature, talking about warm and cool. I tend to use er words. So I just say warmer or cooler because temperature is always relative. It's not an absolute. There we go guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful. Don't forget, if you would like to see a full length, full tutorial of this particular painting of a tiger, I do have this up on my School of Watercolour in the older video sections titled Patreon Archive. The Watercolour School is proving to be really exciting, it's starting to really gain momentum. We've got a fantastic little community there revolving around the Members Forum and we have new professionally filmed tutorials which are released every couple of weeks, plus loads of techniques and tips videos, and a good ever-growing selection of my older Patreon videos as well. So if you wanna take your learning a little bit further, kind of break through any frustrations you have, I definitely recommend checking this out. Until next time, guys, happy painting, and I will catch you soon.